Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Now, the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill. Oh, crack is wide! Oh, you're back! Thank God! I've not waited for this, but it showed up in my feed. Welcome to the Greatest Story Never Told podcast, episode number 74. We made it that far. As we uh, uh, still in the uh, the midst of a celebration here at our flagship station, our only station, 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, uh, celebrating 50 years. And as we uh, continue on the celebration, we are going uh, a little bit more back in time and listening to some of the things that aren't available to you anymore online, but uh, some of the favorite guests that we've had over the 16 years that we've been here. So we've had all kinds of people from all walks of life. We've had athletes come in here. We've talked to actors and actresses. I remember some of them. Obviously, a number of musicians come through, uh, but every once in a while, there's a a number of great comedy clubs that are still in the area. Some have moved on and shut down, but otherwise, uh, when comedians come in, occasionally they would come in and visit the show. Now, I will ask you, Steve, if you remember any of these interviews with these comedians that we talked to. All right. First uh, up is uh, Christopher Titus. Yeah, of course. He had a show called Titus. Yeah, we developed a good relationship with him. So I always remember him because we're more on a friend level at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? In fact, last time he came in here, I remember we fired up the mics and the first goddamn words he says to me, right? Miles says something like, hey, man, you're looking good because I think he's working out or whatever. And Titus looks at me and he goes, Man, you look like a wise turtle. <laughs> oh, a wise that's turtle. That's how it started. Yeah. You look like a cartoon of yourself, <laughs> yes, was like... what he said the last time before that. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher Titus, great guy. Uh, we enjoy having him. Uh, Sarah Colonna, who is a comedian. She was on Chelsea lately, back in the day when that show was still a thing. Uh, been doing stand-up for a number of years. You might know her more from the fact that uh, locally she married ex-Seahawk punter John Ryan. Mm-hmm. And they have uh, been married for probably five or six years at this point in time. Uh, John will do some stand-up before uh, Sarah comes out every once in a while. They're very charitable. and They give back to the Seattle area. Wonderful people. Love I remember Sarah. her. Tom Green. Yeah, you remember Tom Green. When Tom Green visits you in person, like if we talked to him on the phone, probably wouldn't remember. When Tom Green is in the studio, you remember. Because one thing about Tom Green, and anyone who's met him at Green, he's exactly who you think he is. There's he is. no act. That is who he is. And the great thing about Tom Green is if you look at the way that late night television is done right now, Tom Green was on MTV with the Tom Green show back in the day when Jon Stewart had a show on MTV, mm-hmm. the Jon Stewart show. And as wacky as it was, they would do crazy stuff. I mean, all kinds of crap happened there. It's more reflective of what goes on in late night television now than it was then. You got to remember it was Letterman, and Leno, right, just and straight these interviews, old guys, and they were monologue, bringing, interview, yeah. interview, musical guest out. Right, and there's nothing wrong with that, but every late night show was exactly that. Tom Green, uh, he he changed that game a little bit as far as the structure of those shows. Not only that, but Freddie got fingered. Although it might not be a cinematic masterpiece, still a pretty funny movie that holds up to this day. If you expect a cinematic masterpiece out of a movie that is titled Freddie Got Fingered, you set your expectations too high. Uh, one thing I do remember about Tom Green, he rolls in, and like I say, he's just who he is. And so he's talking to us, and I can't remember what his deal was, but he's like, in fact, I'm going to give out my cell phone number. right? And most people think he's joking. And after he gives this number... For the rest of the show, he's it's, like, it's, it's blowing when he keeps up. going, my oh, phone's on, blowing up. We're like, you just told everyone you're goddamn. People call right. him the rest of the show. Uh, comedian Ari Spears. He, uh, I remember that. He was on the program. He does a lot of great uh, impressions. As a matter of fact, when DMX recently passed away, we paid, uh, played a bit of his uh, interview with us because he had a couple interesting <laughs> stories about DMX to share. Yeah. Gary Goldman. Do you remember Gary Goldman? Taller I, guy. Funny guy. I don't. Okay, Gary oh, Goldman. That's his picture. Uh, yeah, it's Gary Goldman. Okay, I recognize him as a human being. I have zero recollection of speaking to this man. Regular guy on Conan O'Brien and uh, Leno and other shows. Josh Wolf, who was also on Chelsea lately. Do not remember. With uh, Sarah Colonna, he came in. Also, uh, Matt Bronger was in. Uh, these are just a few. The late Brody <laughs> Stevens came you on You could be saying anybody right now. Right. Like, 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I do not remember these I know last that. couple. That's why, that's why I write it. Jesus. Bro- Brody so Stevens was a, a Seattleite. He used to do a cable access show here in Seattle, and uh, then he moved down to Los Angeles, and he was a regular on the club scene in L.A. for a number right. of years. Uh, Brody, he, he, battled, uh, he battled his own demons as far as just where his head would be. He, he did not drink. He did not smoke. Mm-hmm. He did not do drugs. Brody just had a very difficult time getting through day to day. So he's no longer with us. But one of our favorite uh, comedians, at least in my mind, and the great thing about this is you think to yourself, okay, like, we, uh, Stephen, you, you kind of show up better than anyone else. We don't remember this stuff. It, is, it has been too long. That's a very kind and way for you to you say you're forgetful. Him. Steve, you know, you, you kind of show people that. No, I don't remember. Well, we don't remember it either. So, and that's it. Like, you do an interview and then you're done with it. And th- this interview was only aired once. So, like, we've been on for 16 years. If you well, didn't happen yeah. to catch Gilbert Gottfried that day in the 20-minute window that he was on, you never heard Gilbert Gottfried on the show. We don't remember having Gilbert Gottfried on the show other than a picture and the fact that we knew he walked in the studio. I, I have remember no idea. more his... <laughs> The unexpected interaction that Gilbert Gottfried had with a listener of our show. And it's just so Gilbert Gottfried got to, you know, gets here before the interview. And he's in quote unquote the green room, as it were. But there's a guy named Marty that listens to the show, and Marty lives in his own world. Harmless guy, but loud, crazy, kind of fun. And so I don't know why Marty was visiting. I mean, you never knew why. He would just show up and like give you a Sharpie or something, right? But Marty is on his way out. We're now getting Gilbert Gottfried to come to the studio. And Marty stops in his tracks and uh He's like, that's Gilbert Godfrey. We're like, yeah. So he goes, Gilbert. And think of all the things Gilbert Godfrey has done. Marty looks at Gilbert Godfrey, and he meant this from the bottom of his heart. I loved you as whoever the goddamn parrot was in Aladdin. Yes. <laughs> like, he <laughs> Gilbert was. So yeah. he does But he the knew voice. the name of the parrot. Right. So he goes, man, I loved Iago. you in Aladdin. At, what yeah. is it? Iago. As Iago, right? So Gilbert Godfrey, because that's probably just not the, the comedy here's most, just the way he looked at Marty, he just goes, uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. And walked away. Thanks a lot. <laughs> now, keep in mind, when Gwen Gilbert is on, we're, we're, we're pumping a, we're, we're pro, you know, giving them props on a show, whatever it is in town, whatever he was doing at the time, probably Bellevue Comedy Club. I don't know. Either way, uh, we're going to go back in time. And this is back to 2015. One of our favorites. That's it? Uh, yeah, comedians. Jesus, ever. It's been, man. It's been I'm six years. Sure be, I feel like I should remember six years. I thought you were going to say, like, 2009. No, I'd no, be like, no, right. no, 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 no. God damn. We're just going to go back in time I need here in. on or episode whatever. 74 with Gilbert Godfrey as we go back in time. Time. On the Greatest Story Never Told podcast. Time. Not very time. long ago. Time. 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 We talked about this yesterday, uh, what people have used in place of toilet paper at the time of need. Uh-huh. And we agree because the guy used an empty bag of chips. And we said, look, man, when it comes to bags of chips, I know that, like, baked Lay's, have a slightly softer packaging uh, than regular Lay's. And there was a woman on the elevator today, and I was so tempted to say, she's standing across from me eating barbecue baked Lay's. And I'm looking at the bag, and I realize I'm staring at her smiling, and she looks at me real nervous, and I'm like, do I tell her and say, look, on the off chance that you gamble and lose, just so you know, I'm not saying anything, we're talking about this yesterday, you could wipe your ass on that bag of chips and be better. Paper. Right. That's all I'm saying. A little bit softer. And one more email. It says, uh, guys, uh, last night for the first time in my life, I tried Spam. I don't know what uh, possessed me to try it, but I figured, hey, uh, you got to try spam, right? Uh, so I popped it open. Ooh, golly. Grabbed a spoon and went in uh, straight oh, in. Jesus, oh. man. Most disgusting, revolting thing I can think I've ever tried in my life. Uh, and I've eaten some nasty stuff. I know you can doctor it up in certain ways to make it god awfulness, but for me personally. You can doctor up anything to make it taste one better. One spoonful, I don't think there's any recipe on God's green earth that can make it uh, taste. I don't even think it's fit for my dog, he said. Had someone not told you that spam is gross? I, Phil, mean, you need to, I think you need to slice it and fry it, if I'm not mistaken. Don't you? I mean, spam is one of those products. I think what you Gilbert, do, man. looking at me like I'm yes. crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think you open the can, you let it slide out, and then you throw it in the trash. Yeah, well, you you eat the spam first, and then you wipe your ass with some <laughs> with, the sure. with the rest of the spam. You've been to Hawaii. You know the culture. Yeah. Now, see, here's what I don't understand. It aren't like uh, potato chip bags, like a little too smooth. Don't they need some kind of That's resistance? That's why the baked lays, man, because the packaging is a little closer to paper than foil. Oh, and we'd had a guy, and we talked about this. Uh, there was a Ryanair flight in Europe, and they announced basically after they locked the door, "Oh, hey, on this three-hour flight, there's no toilet paper." So if you go to the bathroom, you got to improvise, and everyone has had to improvise. And a uh, guy used a potato chip bag. Hmm. And we just said baked so, lays. So if if I'm at a toilet paper, uh-huh. I can use a lays. Gilbert, this is what we learned. Yeah, and, and this this actually shocked me. <laughs> we had a landscaper call. All right, 
And the landscaper, it's a science for him because he pointed out that uh, in his industry, there's never a convenient place to drop a deuce, but you still got to do it. Yeah. So what they do is uh, they start with the sleeves on their shirt, not the whole shirt, the sleeves. And he pointed out the shirt he was wearing yesterday was sleeveless from a past encounter. You can use the pockets on your shirt. Uh, pocket on your shirt. But, there's, oh, yeah. but you can take the collar off yeah. of your shirt and use that. So you're not losing your entire shirt. And then you can use pants pockets uh, and cut the elastic off your side. This guy had a science. But you can dig a hole in someone's yard and, and poop there. And, yeah. and so he's pooping do. in your yard, but he's wiping with his own and clothes. And so Lay's potato chip. <laughs> Back to Lay's. Does Does it, Lay's. It, yeah, because I still think. Because <laughs> you eat nuts. Does it have, it has enough, like, uh, like Give? grab? Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, okay. Because I don't want just something sliding. Absolutely. There. That wouldn't do any good. But if you're using a bag of Lay's potato chips, I think it's safe to argue that there are no other alternatives. Oh, oh, okay. I mean, I'm not just saying buy a bag of Lay's and go to the bathroom. But, but are <laughs> are there leaves around? There aren't no. leaves? No. I got there's leaves, you're leaves. going to leave. Yeah. What? So, you use leaves you, first, You would have never agreed to come on this program again if you'd remembered us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we're going. So, so, in other words, there's no trees there are where no trees. you're taking a dump. Right. You, yeah. This is an unfortunate, <laughs> you're horrible in the desert. situation. You're in the desert. So, so the you're desert. in the middle of the sea, Sahara Think Desert and you got with a bag of, a bag of lace <laughs> potato <laughs> chips. Right? And you yes. thought he brought them to eat. There's a, yeah. Side, yeah. There's yeah. a sidewinder don't... rattlesnake going by you. Yeah. As you and, and you don't have water no? or a compass <laughs> or even sunglasses, <laughs> but you're there in the middle of the desert with a bag of potato chips. <laughs> Just to wipe Which I think would be the last thing I'd want to eat. It's in the salt. middle of the desert, there's potato chips. <laughs> Greasy fingers. It's so dry. And what skunk oh, weed is, uh, is that, that's uh, a leaf or a cabbage? It's a cabbage uh, It's a cabbage, it's cabbage leaf. leaf. Yeah, but yeah. that makes sense, man. As far as produce goes, I would think a cabbage or lettuce leaf, probably your best bet. More coverage, right? Yeah. Would you believe that's actually a vegetable? I would think it's just weed. I got skunk cabbage. Well, Gilbert, I'm sure right. you're in a situation where there's no toilet paper. I mean, you've been to a gig before and you had to use the bathroom real quick, and they don't supply the ba- oh, oh, yeah. bathroom or whatever. I'm sure that's yeah. happened before. Yeah, that Plus, happened. You're, you're wandering, in the, wandering in the desert a lot with potato chips. I, I remember being at a club once, and we were down in the basement waiting around. I was waiting to go on. And, and I asked the owner, I said, is there a bathroom here? And, and the guy said, well, are you making a one or a two? <laughs> It's like you're on the gray. Yeah. yeah. And I said, uh, one. And he goes, well, because it's a big basement. Oh. So it was just. like you could just pee in the basement. <laughs> so that was, that was a. Did you ask him what you would do if it were a two? Yeah, that I, <laughs> I mean, uh, like... then I, I'd have to run out and get some potato chips. <laughs> Look, this is an ad. The difference is it's about AT&T's deal on the incredible new iPhone 15 Pro. And it's real. Guaranteed. That's not always the case with other ads. The view of a lifetime. Only with a pricey upgrade. Flavor you'll never forget. You will. Save on the latest trends. If you pay for a membership. Shoes that'll make you fly. They won't. A drive unlike any other. If it's your first time driving it. Breathe in to find inner peace. Then pay extra to remove the ads. At AT AT&T, we mean what we say. Everyone gets our best iPhone deals, guaranteed. Learn how to get iPhone 15 Pro with titanium on us with eligible trade-in. Connecting changes everything. AT&T. See att.com slash iPhone for details about the guaranteed trade-in promo for new and existing customers. Available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. Gilbert Godfrey <laughs> at uh, Parlor Live in Seattle tonight, 730. Friday and Saturday shows, uh, two of them at 730 and uh, 10 o'clock. Welcome back. How's the Amazing Colossal Podcast going for you? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Colossal Podcast. It's on gilbertgodfrey.com. And subscribe to it on iTunes or Sideshow Network. People love TV. it, man. Yeah, I mean... It, it's weird because I like concentrate mainly on old show business. You do. You had Larry Storch on the other. Yeah, day. I had two mem. That's only one member of F Troop. I had on. <laughs> yeah, Corporal Egarn and and, uh... and Ken Berry. Oh, he was the star. 
Yeah. He was the one everybody liked. Oh, now, yeah. Now, could you imagine, and I'm being dead serious, Gilbert, when you think <laughs> about the world where it is today, I was just, we were reading something the other day about uh, Adam Sandler's doing a movie for Netflix, and it's an, there's Native Americans portrayed in a negative light, or I, I don't know exactly. Yeah. People have walked I off. I suppose it's a positive light that we've been yeah. so well known for. <laughs> yeah. no, That's news. No tears, no, no, no trash. Uh, that was an Italian dude. Exactly. The you Indian know, crime, it, because you littered back in the 70s, a that TV Italian commercial. Dude. That was an mm-hmm. Italian dude. Oh, oh, that's right. You remember that guy? Yes, yeah, yes, he was like, hey, the, don't throw your sure. trash in the goddamn <laughs> woods. <laughs> with the one tear. Yeah. Don't mess up the pine berries. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jersey's a beautiful with the state. bodies in yeah. it. But, but isn't that weird that, uh, I mean, think about F Troop and how just blatantly, it was a great show. It was very funny. But, I mean, that would never fly today. See, what, what drives me nuts with F Troop is I know if I had been acting back then... I could have played an Indian. You would have been an Indian. <laughs> yeah, you would have been an Indian. Like you would have been a like memorable even, one. So even like even when you when you put up po- uh, pictures of like the Batman stuff, like you really would have been a great penguin. Yes. Or a, like it really would fit you. It makes sense instead of being on goddamn Celebrity Apprentice, oh, yeah. where you have where you have Donald Trump going like, I don't have a sense of humor, and you're out or whatever. You're fine. I mean, like goddamn, Gilbert, why do you set yourself up for that stuff? Yeah. You know he's, he's I, got no sense of humor. And and I had on the podcast, I had Adam West, and Adam West said to me, he goes, you would have made a great penguin. You would have made a great <laughs> yeah. penguin. And why, when they do these new movies, they have the tough guy Christian Bale and all that stuff, but why don't they go back to the campier, kind of 60 or, oh, 60s yes. more, kind of uh, more comic book-like? And uh, I had two cat women on the same episode uh, Lee Merriweather and uh, Julie Newmar. And they were both right. beautiful women. Yes. Beautiful redheaded women back in the day, you know, and, and the great Eartha thing about- Kitt was one, but she's passed, right? Eartha yeah. Kitt is yeah. one. Oh, yeah. But yeah, they had, what, three but, different cats? But Gilbert, you- Yes, and, well, yes, yes. It's uh, almost like you're archiving television. You're, you're interviewing people right before they die, so we get the last word in on all the great experiences. Right before they, they get had. their lifetime yeah, achievement I mean, awards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I, you're about to it's die soon. Stuff, man. It's I great. was originally going to call the show the Before It's Too Late show. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought it would be hard to get guests with that title because you're basically saying, you know, could you come on my show because I think you'll be dead in a couple well, of days. Larry Storch has got to be in his Look. 90s, right? He's got to be 89. Oh, oh my God. He's yeah, old, Larry isn't he? Storch is. I think he's in his 90s. And he was he was lucid on your podcast, yeah. everything. He knows all the stories and all the stuff from back we in the had day. on Joe Franklin, and then like and about a month away. later he died. So. Yeah, but Larry, Which lends credence to your original name. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but Larry, you know, and you remember the time where it, either it was Glenn Campbell or, hell, uh, Richard Pryor, but everybody had a variety show, Sonny and Cher, and the of the world, Hee Haw. Roy Clark Le- and Buck Owens Le- Larry, had a goddamn variety but show. But Larry would show up on all those shows. Like, Larry was, in a weird way, like, he was like this weird, like, dinosaur or somebody like, I don't know why I know you, <laughs> yeah. but I, but I kind of know you, you know, but he was one of those guys. Yeah, and Ellen, the Starline vocal band. Right, right after oh, good. afternoon show. delay. Yes. We're talking about a nooner and having sex <laughs> yeah. in this five-minute window, but we're so sweet when we sing it, oh, nobody yeah. minds. <laughs> That's right. What, uh, and we brought up Celebrity Apprentice. How was that experience? I know that was, was it was it as bad as the wife swap thing? Or was it, I mean, was it as contrived? And it was, it, You really want to win, I know. You, yeah. do, you do. Well, with me, I, I came in not caring. <laughs> and, but everybody else, they get into it like, oh, I got to win. Sure. You know, like, you know, yeah. What I, do you win? Yeah. Like, if you win, exactly. what, what do you win? Because I, and I would say to them, like, do you really think you're going to take over Trump Enterprises? <laughs> right. Mean, Is it yeah. weird, like, hearing his daughter talk? You go, like, what the heck's going on here? My father you, got two, has you have two kids. Could you imagine if they sounded like you? Be like, don't listen to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how does she sound exactly like her dad? Oh, it's very scary. It's weird, isn't it? You know, nice looking girl, but it's yeah. like, uh, you know, if you, t- I think you'd be imagining, if you were having sex with her, you'd imagine Some... you're, you know, it was <laughs> Donald. Donald. Yeah. Ah, that was yeah, that would be good. Then it got that's... angry. <laughs> <laughs> she was the best sex I ever had. Like, you're yeah. goddamn right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Getting you back. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, interesting thing. I don't know how long ago this was. It was probably uh, oh, four or five, I don't know, six months ago or whatever. I picked up a New York Times, uh, and, and there you are in, like, the, in the style section. And let's talk about the fact, and I'm not making this up, that Gilbert and his wife have, have re, re, uh, redone their home. 
Oh, yeah. Read on their pad. Yeah, I had a lot to do with that. And, but here was yeah. the thing that stuck in my head. No, but here was the thing that stuck in my head, and I knew right away, because you know me, man, especially when we go to hotels, what I always right. do. I steal the shampoos, mm-hmm. and I steal the soap. Oh, that's the first thing I do. I know that, yeah, and yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I'm like, I have a connection with Gilbert Gottfried. We steal, and it's not that you can't have it for free. We steal. Yeah. <laughs> because you, you can. But what I'll do is every once in a while, I'll take out the soaps and the shampoos, and I'll, I'll use them because I feel like I'm on vacation when I'm at home. And that's what, But you have like... You have like pretzels from like TWA Airlines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have like, like, like Pan Am matches and stuff. Like you've got seriously I old have pretzels crap. from Charles Lindbergh. It's almost yeah. like you would be a hoarder if New York would just give you enough room to have stuff to put stuff oh, in. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if there were actual closets and places where you could stash stuff, you would have everything. Oh, yeah. I had, I, when I moved, I was, uh, uh, the wife forced me to throw stuff out, but I had soaps <laughs> from Pan Am <laughs> and TWA. But you really did, I bet. Yeah. I mean, honest to God, in almost every hotel that you've been in, like, you have a huge box, and most of these hotels don't even exist anymore. Right. It's oh, like, yeah. You know, like, uh, <laughs> like a, I don't know, like a Tombow debt thing. But did you ever get busted stealing, like, uh, uh, whatever the product is, and you're like, come on, man, you know, we need that here, whether it's the holiday and towels, because... Does Holiday Inn still emboss their name on the towels? It used to be, it was awesome to steal a Holiday Inn towel because it actually said Holiday Inn. Oh, they don't yeah. have that. That was the prize, man. Oh, yes. Except oh, that you stayed at Holiday Inn. Steve, I'm not making this up. In the picture where they show Gilbert and he's got the box of all the crap that he stole from the hotels, he's wearing a pair of hotel slippers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't think I didn't notice that, too. Yeah, yeah. I thought about gripping the slippers, too, but yeah. you actually did. Yeah, I, I well, because, I mean, they can't use them afterwards. Sure, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and, I mean, granted, they have the support of a piece of paper. <laughs> but still, they're comfortable. Control. But you can wipe your ass with them. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're ever... Uh, In the desert. You yeah, if you're naked hotel in the desert and a bag of Lay's potato <laughs> chips. <laughs> so, but here, but here's, but here, but here's, yeah. so, so I'm looking at this thing, and, and Gilbert's got a beautiful uh, flat in in New York, and then like all the things that a guy would want to have in his house that he can't because the wife says no, you can't have that. Gilbert's got it. Like there's like this six foot uh, poster or like pic- movie picture of Frankenstein. Yeah. In your goddamn living room. Yeah. Now, that is amazing that as a man, that you can pull that off. Where <laughs> With she a wife. No, I'm being that serious. Right. And she said, no way. You can't have this. You know what I mean? But yeah. you have it. It's like the it's a featured piece in your living room. Yeah. I, I saved that from when I was a kid. I was like in the back of Famous Monsters of Filmland. They made it sound like... You got some actual monster that came right. Well, it was a huge poster. Yeah, like in the old days, they had six feet. Painting seven. Uh-huh. of Frankenstein. But you used to be a fan. You used to write to those guys. And you used to actually, like, you have a framed uh, a picture of what Lon Chaney Jr. We were just talking about Lon Chaney. We were just Lon Chaney about Jr., don't you? Do you wrote yeah, a letter or something I, like that? I, I, uh, I saw it in the magazine. They said he wasn't feeling well. And there was an address you could write to him. And I sent him a get well card. And he was fine with that. He yeah. wrote you back. And and I got back a picture of the wolf man that he signed. <laughs> but but you, have all, you have masks of uh, of horror movie characters. You have Lon Chaney oh, and yeah, Bela Lugosi. Oh, yeah, and... life masks. I had uh, Lon Chaney Jr., Bela Lugosi, Vincent Price, and uh, Al Pacino. Wow, <laughs> and, it's, and it's hanging in his house. You know what I mean? Like that's that was the one thing. Yeah, I that's cool, art. man. Yeah, big uh, Groucho Marx, uh, mm-hmm. beautiful uh, picture and stuff like that. And I thought, man, you have pool with the wife because you actually got the cool stuff put in the main areas of the house, which I can't get done. It's all in storage someplace. You know, all my all my all my cool things. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried at uh, Parlor Live in Seattle uh, tonight, seven thirty, seven thirty on Friday and ten, and uh, seven thirty and uh, ten on Saturday. Can you stick around for a little bit? We'll we'll talk some comedy, whatever ever else is going on in your life. Uh, all right. Okay. So, anyway, <laughs> do you have dinner plans? Are we yeah, cutting out right. on anything here? All right. <laughs> the legendary Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, more with Gilbert right after this. No es fácil ser el hermano más chico. Todo lo tengo que compartir con mis hermanos, el cuarto, el baño. Lo único que no compartimos es la portería. Siempre voy yo. Por eso estoy feliz de que mis padres compraron el Atlas. La tercera fila es bien grande y es toda para mí. Pero no le digas nada a mis hermanos. Si no, la van a querer para ellos también. Nuevo Volkswagen Atlas 2024. Un diseño de primera hasta para el último. Welcome back to the men's room. 99.9 KISW. 
Legendary Gilbert Gottfried is in town. Uh, funniest guy in stand up uh, by far. Uh, tonight, 7 30, Friday, Saturday, 7 30, and uh, 10 o'clock. Parlorlive.com. All the details. Uh, Gilbert, I, I think there's a number of comedians that, that would say that you are, without, without a doubt, the funniest guy. And, and I know you probably, I know you don't take that as a compliment. I know you don't believe Who that. Who would? But, yeah. you know, when there's guys like uh, Penn Gillette or, uh, you know, Penn and Teller, those guys, without question, say you're the funniest guy they've ever seen. I mean, there's so many comedians out there who... Uh, well, we don't know if Teller said it, but Penn <laughs> certainly yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. And then I read something today that said uh, that they're thinking about doing holograms now. That's creepy, um, dude. Because it's not like you're really reliving... I would be more comfortable if you reanimated the corpse of a dead... And you go like, all right, well, I mean, at least they're there. How weird would the that hologram be for you, is strange. you? You work with these guys. Well, what, what, if, what if there was a, a, a George, George Carlin, Carlin hologram that came out? Or, would that just be... I mean... Yeah, it, it sounds creepy. Because it could, it could be you. You know but, what I mean? But you know something? As, as is always the case, every new innovation, immediately porn... <laughs> right. So I could definitely see porn holograms. If you yeah. serve up yeah. porn in any right. capacity, you're yeah. right. people people go to it. If you put yeah. it on animal crackers, like, they're the I'm, first ones. Well, the reason they're is is because on. if you watch a, a screen version of pornography, that's great. But if it was a hologram of two people doing it on the floor, you probably just would watch the floor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever it is, that's where you watch. Maybe that's the future of holograms right there. It probably is, yeah. man. I mean, they're trendsetters in porn. They really are, man. Well, that's where people are going to go. Uh, you uh, first interactive DVD I ever owned, uh, Gilbert. Did you? Did you go <laughs> first to that? interactive a lot of first <laughs> magazine that put me in the storyline? Blu Ray first everything. Did you go to that Saturday Night Live 40th oh, anniversary yes. thing? Okay, yeah. what was uh, we we had uh, Tom Green in, and Tom hosted the show one time. You were actually a cast member on the program. Yeah, uh, you came in. What's the best way to describe uh, when Gilbert arrived at Saturday Night Live? It was it was almost as Awful. if. <laughs> well, no, no, no! But it was just—it was a timing thing. It really wasn't. It wasn't. Oh well, it was. It, it everybody was bolded. right after the original cast and producer left. Okay, so so who was involved? Who who took off right before you got there? Uh well, there was like all the old people. Uh, well, I guess Belushi was there, and uh, Lauren Michaels. Did he? Yeah, he bolded Lauren at that Michaels, time. Lauren Michaels. Okay. Uh, they were all people leaving. Ackroyd, Gilda Radner. That had to be uh, weird to come into that building with, with none of those people there. Yeah, because back then, it was like, if in the middle of Beatlemania, you said, we're getting rid of John, Paul, George, and Ringo, <laughs> and here are four other schmucks, right. and you'll listen to them. And that was you. <laughs> yeah. And you came in to mop that up. And who else was on but that But did that you season? know that was happening? Because, you know, now it's well established that the SNL cast will change over time or yeah, different. But, well, but did anyone know that then? Now it changes constantly. Sure. You can't keep track of who's on. But back then, that was sacrilege. And they were like... Months before we got on the air, it was the biggest news story. Like, how dare they? Uh, so you guys didn't even get a chance. Yeah, yeah. And when we got on, we did suck. So <laughs> well, who else was on? The, who was who else was who else was cast members that came in with you? Do you, do you... Okay, I'll name two that you, you you'll know, and that's uh, Eddie Murphy and Joe Piscopo. Sure. Okay. Now, can you name any of the others? I'm guessing maybe Tim was Tim Kazarinsky no, part of that. No, he came later. Oh, damn, Lorraine Newman was not there anymore. I don't guess. No. So you started when you started. Eddie Murphy and Piscopo started the same uh, season. Yes. Yeah. Was my Anthony and, Michael Hall? Uh, no, he came. And you know, this is what's happening here. Is just th when I was fired from there, I remember thinking. Oh, God, everyone's going to be looking at me as the guy from that horrible season of Saturday Night. And now, you know, within no time, it's like how history is all mixed up. How, like, cavemen are fighting dinosaurs, <laughs> even though they <laughs> so were like millions rest. of years apart. <laughs> okay. And it's yeah. like, that's the way Saturday Night Live is. You don't even remember who was on what season. So uh, Paul Schaefer. Uh, no. Damn. No. Uh, that was a good guess, too. Yeah. What is Joe Piscopo doing now? Like, Eddie Murphy isn't doing a lot, but he is counting his money all the way to the back. Yeah. I think Joe yeah. And that's does, understood, uh, and he plays. Donkey is probably the greatest thing he's had to do as far as just making cash. Joe Piscopo, I just don't know. It seemed like he had a moment to really, really shine. You know, people were kind of on the train, oh, yeah. and he's just. I, I don't know. He yeah, like, I mean, he, didn't he, like, you lose himself in the weight room for a number oh, of years? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, he. He became like, I the idea of comics, uh, muscle bound comedians, like uh, Carrot Top. Carrot Top 
But I it was saw, never funny. No. I saw a photo of Carrot Top without his shirt on. And I remember I thought, oh, this is like one of those gag pictures <laughs> that he glued his head on to a muscle man body. And then you realize, no. Yeah, and I thought, and then I saw him on TV and he had his clothes on and his shoulders looked like, you know, football player uh, pads. Did uh, yeah? Well, that's ba- basically he is he is a, he is a human bodybuilder. I mean, the guy looks like he'd be Cat a Mister Olympia. What uh, did anyone come up to you? Mister Olympia will never look like that. Did Did Eddie Murphy come up and say, "Hey, Gilbert, how you been doing, man? What's been going on? I'm a donkey now, and uh, you're, yeah. uh, you're a parrot." Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I already played a parrot. I played a donkey. Did you, guys, donkey. Did you guys have any of those conversations <laughs> or anything like that? Was it? Hey, how, what have you been up to? Or? Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of people I spoke to. It was. You know what was weird about that party? It's like, you know, you'd see, like, Leonardo DiCaprio talking to uh, whoever, like, and Miley Cyrus was there. But do they identify you? Do they go, like, oh, Gilbert, I love you, and you're like, oh, my God, Miley Cyrus just gave me a hug. Or did oh, you have those weird experiences in Miley life? Miley Cyrus, uh, I had done um, uh, Hannah Montana. Okay. So I said hello to her. And she asked if I wanted to do any tequila shots. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that that's sounds nice. exactly what I would okay. expect. I, and I thought, in theory, it sounds great. Because sure. in theory, you're both doing tequila shots, and then you're in a hotel room. <laughs> the so next thing I, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I know with me, like being the lightweight I am, I, I drink one, and I start throwing up. <laughs> And then I'd start uh, praying for God to take me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what do you think of uh, with, with the new kids? Coming, the, the Justin Bieber he just had a roast on uh, on Comedy Central. You've been doing roasts forever, and that's basically what the Friars Club is known for. What's the difference between the roast that they put on television and the roast with the doors closed in the Friars Club? I mean, how much more brutal is it? See what what I would like to see or hear a recording of is they used to have roasts where like. Jack Benny and George Burns and people like that would be roasted and being really obscene. With each other. Milton Berle, all yeah, those guys. It wasn't like the Dean Martin roast, like that was made for TV. Sure. Well, comedians don't go easy on each other. No, and that's no. the thing, when you put a celebrity up there like Donald Trump and you see him, his brow furring, or Gene Simmons, like, this is not funny. Well, those guys aren't funny. But comedians used to roast comedians. That oh, was the yeah. whole point of the Friars Club. So you could get as dirty as you wanted to be oh, yeah. without any ramification. And that's where you come in. <laughs> and, and yeah. And <laughs> I mean, it really is. Well, that's where, um, like, there was that, uh, the um, one, the U Hefner one. And that's where I, I was roasting U Hefner. And, and it was like about three days after September 11th oh, that happened. So I so I made I wanted to be the first one to make a September 11th. But deal. you're from New York. You yeah. live in New York. It's your whole life. You know, yeah. it's okay. You, you get the pass. Yes. <laughs> you hope. And 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 uh, they I so I said I have to leave early tonight. I have to catch a flight to LA. I couldn't get a direct flight. We have to make a stop at the Empire State Building. <laughs> Jeez. And the audience was booing and hissing and gasping, and chairs were screeching back. And then, after what felt like 200 years, uh, <laughs> I, I figure, screw it, I can't go any lower, so I'll do the aristocrats and lose some more. And they were howling and applauding, so it's like, Terrorist attacks, bad taste, incest and bestiality, good taste. Have you ever had that one <laughs> joke where you where you felt bad about it, Gilbert? Has there ever been a time where you looked at someone and went, ah, oh, they don't get it? Uh, uh, nah. <laughs> yeah, <it's just> <laughs> and a boy. Gilbert Godfrey, the partner live in Seattle tonight, 730, Friday, 730 and 10, Saturday, 730 and 10. All the details at ParlorLive.com. It's always a pleasure, Gilbert. We and, really appreciate it. And my it. website uh, is GilbertGodfrey.com. You could hear... My uh, amazing colossal podcast, which yeah, is actually worth listening to, it really is. It's fantastic. And oh, and my Twitter is real Gilbert. Exactly. Real Gilbert. Real Gilbert. Right. Not to be confused with. You've been listening to the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill on Radio.com. Oh man! A double flush production.